Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are still talking about the set B and looking forward to talk about the remaining questions on the chapter 5. Uh, chapter 5 being a very crucial chapter. We are looking forward to talk each and every question in very detail so that you have a very clear picture when you look them in your real examination. We have got two more questions to go from here and pretty much very important to be discussed which will add a great value to your learning and preparation towards the certification. The next question we are talking about is question number 37 and which of the following is least likely to be an example of the product risk correct the analysis correctly influencing the testing. Now the most important thing to remember in such type of questions that the word like least, most, best, not are very common in ISTQB certification especially for the foundation level because here people do not prefer to read those keywords that with, did they ask you the best, did they ask you the most or least or not because that sometimes turns around the meaning of the question. The only uh, objective of this question is to ask you what is something which is not a common thing to be done while talking about product risk analysis and output of that influencing the testing effort right now a lot of people think uh, what should be done when we talk about product risk analysis but no here we're talking about the least let's have a look on the option a the option A says the potential impact of security flaws has been identified as being particularly high. So here you identified that the security flaws is being identified as high. So security testing has been prioritized ahead of some other testing activities. I think this is perfectly in line because you have identified some security flaws and that too determined as high severity or priority, uh, that is the impact basically, so it is high. So we are prioritizing or preponing the security testing activities ahead of other, tech, other activities during the life cycle. And that's pretty much in line and should be performed as mentioned. When you talk about the option B, testing has found the quality of the network module to be higher than expected, so additional testing will not be performed in that area. That also goes in line because uh, testing has found the quality of the network module to be higher than expected, right? So this is higher than expected, so yes, no more testing should be done there because you can concentrate on other areas which are more critical. Right? As far as you meet the objective, meet the accepting, acceptance criteria, you meet the exit criteria of certain modules, you don't, do, really don't have to perform anything beyond. Coming to option C, the users had problems with the user interface of the previous system, so additional usability testing is planned for the replacement testing. Right? Because we have identified problems with the user interface, so we are doing additional usability testing for those replacement systems. That's also correct. D, the time needed to load web pages is crucial to the success of the new website. So an expert in performance testing has been employed for this project. A lot of us will think that this is something unrelated. Option D, in my past experience, people have opted D as the right answer saying that, oh, you just don't because it is crucial, you start hiring people. Now, that's what you do. If you identify during the requirement gathering that performance parameters are crucial and at the same time you do not have a performance expert in your organization, then you would look forward to hire that person because lacking the resource would lead to the failure of the product. So that's also aligned to that of the question. So what is the question here? Which is of the following is least likely to be an example of product risk analysis? and correctly influencing the testing. So if you see, we are talking about the option B here, which says we are talking about the quality of testing on the network module, and this is not something which is relating to the product risk analysis. This is the least related to that, and the outcome is though it is correct, but this has nothing to do with the product uh, risk identification or analysis, because that mainly deals with criticality, deals with impact of a risk, or likelihood of an adverse event to happen. So the right answer here is 
B. Testing has found the quality of network module to be higher than expected, so additional testing will not be performed in that area. Let's look at the next and last question of this chapter 5, that is question number 38, talking about the defect management. You are performing system testing on a train reservation system. Based on the test cases performed, you have noticed that the system occasionally reports that no trains are available, although this should actually be the case. You have provided the developers with a summary of the defect and the version of the tested system. That's great because you should always report a defect with the key information which you should be capturing while reporting it. Now they recognize the urgency of the defect which means priority. Of course, the developers are the one who will determine the priority of the defect and are now waiting for you to provide further details. So let's quickly summarize here which will solve our purpose a little more in simpler way. So this is how the approach is. You don't go to the option or start reading the or complete the reading of the question. Rather, you start summarizing as you read them. So if you see right now till here, we have provided three information or we got the three details of a defect report. That is summary, the version and priority has been identified. That's great. Now, developers are waiting for more details from you. In addition to the information already provided, the following additional information is also given. That is, degree of impact, which is severity, identification of the test item, details of the test environment, urgency or priority to fix, actual results of the execution, reference to the test case specification. Which of this information is most useful to include in the defect report? Now, that's a critical thing to understand sometime that they said that they already got your information. Now they are looking forward to more details from you. In addition to the information already provided, what more should you provide is the question. Because these are the six items they are nominating and you should be looking forward to that. So let's start understanding from the beginning of these six items. The degree of impact severity is the most uh, tricky part of this question. Why? Because a lot, of thing, a lot of people think that yes, severity is the most important thing and which we are missing. The point is, without the severity, how can you determine priority, right? A developer can only determine priority when the defect report is submitted to him. And if the defect report is without severity, a priority cannot be identified. So, priority is dependent on severity. And severity, that means, has been already given to that person and does not require. Because if the developer, for any reason, X, Y, Z, okay, I'm not talking about severity, ignore it. Say we did not give him. If the developer has identified the priority, what's the point of giving the severity now? So it seems that the severity has been already provided or the developers have understood and they have decided the priority. A priority cannot be defined without severity. So ignore the number one. Okay, two, identification of the test item. Will this really contribute the test item identification? If I say this is test case ID three or test case ID four, will that make a difference to developer in order to fix the issue? No. So that's where the identification of the test item will not be relevant because now they have understood already what exactly is the feature you tested and uh, they also understood what exactly you have done and what's the summary of the issue. Coming to three, details of the test environment? Yes, that's crucial because it might be possible that it might be a defect which is appearing in your environment and not appearing in development environment, right? If they, it is appearing in both environment, we would like to know what environment did you use because that would be an attribute, right? Because development environment sometimes is not exactly the same as your environment as QA. So you may have conflicts and due to that, you might be getting the defects. So test environment details are very important. Got it. So three, we just picked it up. Number four is priority. If you have read the question carefully, you know that priority has been already identified. Why would you pick this? So remove number four. Coming to five, actual results. Yes, so far we see that actual results have not been given, which would be really important for anyone to understand what exactly happened when you executed the test, right? And with that, 
comes the reference to the test specification. That is the test case specification item, which is going to tell you that how exactly uh, developers, uh, you know, tell the developers that how exactly the test was run. And it includes the test inputs that caused the system to fail, expected result, and a lot of many other information which you have defined as a part of your test, test case. So test case specification here means that you are putting that entire row where you have the TCID, objective, test data, prerequisite, test steps, expected result, and all. And then you share that. So that's another information which lets a developer reproduce the defect also. Right? So putting it up all together, the right answer here is D, that is 3, 5, and 6. Our three parameters should be included. That is details of the environment, actual results, and test case specification should be further shared with the developer in order to uh, help them resolve the issue. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with the chapter six of this set B and talking about the remaining two questions. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.